from the Cyber Hub Bunker and Studio. You're tuning in to the Cyber Hub Podcast Tech Corner. And now, join me in welcoming your host and CISO, James Azar. Well, folks, it's another Tech Corner. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. It's a special one. It's a unique one. It's one that's made for summer. It's summer. You feel it? Smell it. It's June. And you know what that means? You got to hit the subscribe button. You got to hit the follow button. You got to share this show with your colleagues, with your friends, with people you love, and also people you dislike because, you know, spread out the good cheer. It's summer. It's summer, folks. It's June and it's summer. And I've got a very special episode. Tom Rutten, the CMO over at my friends at Wistic. Tom, thank you for taking a little bit of time to join me today, buddy. Hey, happy to be here. Thanks for asking. And I love summer because you get to wear short sleeves. It's all good. I I wear short sleeves year round, man. I don't know what like the only. You don't live like, in Utah. I do not live in Utah. That is a hundred percent true. Even but even when I lived in Colorado, I'd wear short sleeves, and then I'd put a jacket over me. Yeah. Like so, I mean Utah, Colorado, same stuff. We've got a really cool tech corner today, guys. So we're going to ask you to spend about thirty minutes with us today. All right, we're going to be short, but we're going to be good. We're going to talk about creating partnerships between CISOs and cybersecurity technology providers. And, you know, there was no better person I could think of for this than Tom and the guys over at Wistic because they've really adopted the partnership model. You guys have seen this. You've, I've had Nick, their CEO, on the show, and we've done some webinars with Nick. I've had Juan multiple times, their founder and CTO. And... You guys have seen this. So I wanted to bring kind of the brains of the operation on to talk a little bit about what does it take to create partnerships and that and that kind of culture that really brings about the idea of not just another logo on a website, but rather a true ingrained partnerships. Tom, talk a little bit about, you know, your background and, and, and what you've been doing at Wistic uh, in the time you've been there. Okay. Well, I've been a long time in uh, the software industry, and this is, uh, you know, the latest stop for me in a long line of, of SaaS companies. It's something that I, I like. I, and I believe in the, the model pretty strongly. Um, I guess the, the thing that's really different now than maybe 10 years ago is uh, just this concept of constant connectivity and the fact that we're no longer selling uh, really a product we're selling an entry into a community and that's why this concept of partnership has really become critical and has uh, really pervades everything that we do uh, we're not really signing um, you know companies up to buy something and install it and implement it the way we used to we're trying to integrate into an existing environment and that means that we're going to be partnering and working for a long period of time. This is no longer the days are done where we sell something and move on. This is building a, a long-term relationship with people. Yeah. So you bring up a really good point, which is the idea of building relationships and partnerships. You know, I've seen a lot of the stuff you guys really work on and, you know, I've had the privilege of working with you and your team and, and some of the stuff you guys have been doing on the show. You guys are very insistent on the idea of we're not, we're not just, we don't want to be another vendor. We want to be a partner. Can you tell us a little bit about what is a partnership for you and, and the guys over at Wistic? And, and I'll tell you why I'm asking this, because a lot of our audience are going to think I'm throwing you softball questions. James, what's up with this? And if you guys listen to my CISO Talk podcast, I often talk about the idea that I don't have vendors in my security program. I have partners. And Wistic is one of those companies that emboldens that. And instead of you guys hearing it from me, I wanted to bring someone who can talk about it. And that being Tom. So Tom, let me repeat the question again. What is it? What does a partnership with a client mean to you? What's that definition? And what does it mean to the entire Wistic team? Well, partnership for us is uh, again, it's the essence of that long-term relationship. Uh, partners that that come on, customers that come on to use the Wistic platform, become a part of something that's larger than us or them. They become part of this. Uh, network that generates the network effect. It benefits uh, Wistic and it benefits every company that comes on because the more information 
that we're able to uh, to obtain and the more companies that are interested in sharing their security information, the more it benefits everybody. The easier access companies have to security information of uh, potential or prospective vendors and the lower the cost of people doing those assessments. And so it's, it's good for WISTIC because uh, it enables us to have that long-term relationship. It's good for every customer that comes on board because it enables a better, a more complete and a faster assessment. And so it's that type of relationship that really doesn't have value unless it continues for a long period of time. Yeah, so that's brilliant. One of the things I, I, I often like to brag about when I talk of you know the partners we work with from a security perspective is the idea of um, almost um, uh, two separate DNAs coming together to form kind of a new relationship. And you guys are in the vendor kind of assessment spot. Talk a little yeah. bit about how those partnerships have helped you elevate your company and the business and the product specifically. Well, they drive uh, our roadmap, really. And uh, the features that we uh, put into the product, the direction that we're taking in our development efforts, those are all uh, being driven by the customers that we have, by those partners. Uh, we've recently created a whole team just to work on API and integration into existing environments to make, uh, make it easier for us to snap in and be able to automate processes in existing environments without having to uh, have rip and replace type of installations. Our goal is to make this stuff really easy and simple and uh, something that anybody can uh, easily put into an existing environment. So when we look at security culture within a security organization around the concept of partnerships, what are some of the key factors that st stand out to you as Tom when you look at how you communicate your marketing messaging onwards and beyond? <laughs> well, some of the things are <laughs> right off the bat, uh, I am never going to be the expert in this space. Uh, the people that are listening to this right now, you, you guys are the experts. And so there's a very low tolerance for BS among this community. And so the things that, uh, so that's good. It, the challenge of it is providing content that's valuable and timely. And so we'll work uh, really hard to find things that are, are topical, like uh, providing some assistance to people and giving them some uh, guidance uh, and help with things like the solar winds breach when that came out. Uh, making sure that those things are available quickly and that they add value to the work people are doing. Or uh, we listen a lot. We record all of our sales calls and everybody on our executive team has uh, X amount of time that they set aside every week to listen to those calls. And so we hear, we spend a lot of time, hours a week, listening to things that people are saying to us uh, that happen during the sales calls. And that's what drives a lot of our content. So, uh, you know, if we're going to put together uh, a piece that talks about uh, how you get started putting together a vendor management program in your company, it's not just uh, because we thought that would be a cool topic. It's because that's what people are, are trending and starting to ask us about. And so we'll conduct some research in a lot of cases uh, like we did at the state of vendor uh, security. Uh, but we'll do research. We'll put content together that fits the things that our customers are talking and asking about. But that's how we do it. And uh, we try really hard to come up with things that uh, are uh, right on time. That's not always easy to do. Yeah, so you brought up the State of Vendor Risk Management Report that we did a bunch of episodes on. Um, we had one with, I believe, Nick and Patrick Benoit. Um, mm -hmm. that you guys can go and check out on the CISO Talk podcast. It's a completely different channel, but go check it out. Patrick Benoit, the Senior Vice President of, of, of GRC over at CBRE, is also the BISO there. And um, Nick, who is the CEO over at Wistic, and myself did a very, very fun conversation. You guys kind of went something different on this state of vendor risk management, right? Because you didn't just speak to cyber people. You also spoke to salespeople. What was the kind of switch? Why sales? And, and, and talk a little bit about the thinking behind that. 
Well, uh, this is an ongoing uh, series of research that we do that will help us identify trends and things that are happening so we can stay on top of it. And we decided to start publishing these. But uh, our primary audience that we sell to are InfoSec teams, as you'd expect. But large influencers and users of our product very often are salespeople. And it's because they're involved uh, one of the things we found out is a very large, like 70% of the time security assessments come in, it involves salespeople time in putting those together where they could be out selling. Uh, nobody wants the salespeople to be doing that. The InfoSec guys don't like it when sales represents security and security, uh, sales is uncomfortable representing it. And so we try and, and uh, make it easy for the sales team to be able to share that information at the right time they know best when that is, but uh, allow the InfoSec teams to have control over the message that goes out and the content that, uh, that people see. But the sales teams are uh, very often a large consumer, and they're the ones that use the product very frequently. And so we expanded uh, this year from just talking with the InfoSec people to also talking with salespeople. So starting next year, we'll have trending information not only from InfoSec, but also on sales and find out how that's impacting sales cycles and their processes because those, those things are tied together. The InfoSec guys that we talk with, the primary customer department of them in these reviews, of course, is the sales team. And so this helps them work together better. And another thing that we found uh, through doing this research is that uh, this gives the InfoSec people a chance to contribute and be part of a revenue process. They like that. They tell us they like being a contributor into the, the financial success of the company. Uh, they no longer feel like they're the bottleneck because they can stay on top of these things. And we want to capture those kinds of feelings because we're hearing a lot of people talk about that in our sales conversations. And so that's why we included the sales teams. So talk a little bit about the idea of, of you know, a lot of times when you see research, right? A lot of us, you know, in the industry feel some of the research is always biased. It's tilting towards whatever someone's trying to sell you. When you guys do the state of vendor risk management, what is the overall goal you guys are trying to, you want an average reader to get out of that report as they review it and, and, and study it? Uh, we want them to understand uh, best practices. What are things that uh, people are finding that are helpful for them? Uh, at the end of the day, again, uh, Wistic as a company is agnostic uh, in many ways. We don't care what type of assessment you use. You're the one that knows best what that is. Uh, in our content, we're not trying to tell you that you have to approach things one certain way, but we are trying to show you here are some different approaches that people are taking. And so a lot of our webinars and the material that we publish showcases practices by companies and uh, the intention is to give people ideas because they'll best know how to implement those things on their own. So we talk a little bit about the concept of partnerships, and I want to take us back to, you know, creating real security partnerships between, you know, security teams and the security technology providers, aka vendors. You know, you guys are almost kind of like in the middle of that relationship. What are some We're of the right key the things, yeah. right? What are some of the things that you've learned from being in the middle that you would say, if only companies knew this, then they would probably not only increase their closing rate, but they would probably uh, be viewed more favorably by practitioners. Well, I think uh, the concept of reuse is one of those things. Uh, a common complaint that we hear is people have to complete assessments or do the same thing over and over and over again. And, we hear things like, uh, it's like taking the same class from different professors, and I do the same class, you know, three times a month or something like that. Uh, that's frustrating for people. When you talk with them about uh, completing these assessments, often you get a, a, a visceral reaction, and they, they cringe, or they say, ah, I have more of those I have to deal with. And so uh, one of the things that uh, we try and do in the middle is be able to show people that you have options of ways that you can reuse that work that you've already done. If it's in, uh, you know, saving and uh, repurposing 
the last assessment that you did so the next time you need it you can share it by pressing a button instead of completing another one or by mapping responses that you've previ previously done to several others to a new one uh, you know we want to help people with those types of things and just make that process easier but those are that's a really common thing that we see from our, our position in the middle and we're not trying to recommend any one way but enable all of the different ways that people need to work because everybody has a little different security need. Yeah, but, but you know that that's a that's a brilliant point. Kind of looking at you know the the idea of reuse. But you know, for as a practitioner, let me push back on that for just a second, right? You know what someone else is paying attention to, or the way you integrate, or the way someone uses you here, it may not be identical to me. What are some of the things you think we should? maybe as practitioners listen to from the uh, vendor side in order to better understand some of our ask? Uh, well, maybe the use of standards. That's a, a trend that we continue to see. Uh, some stats that we see from our, our position is that in general, the standards-based questionnaires get responded to faster uh, than the custom ones. And most of the time people take a, uh, if they feel that they, if there's some reason, and there are legitimate reasons, and they could be uh, regulatory, they could be things that are legislated to a particular industry, but there are legitimate reasons why people create custom questionnaires, but they're usually a modification of something that's already existing. And so by leveraging those standards, uh, most of the time people can get most of the way where they need to go very quickly. Yeah, so I, I really like that approach. When you and I, um, you know, you and I have talked a lot and we've had the opportunity to really exchange some ideas. When you look at, for example, something along the lines of, um, you know, relationship development, you guys have been really good at this. I mean, the first webinar we did was with one of your customers, with Gray Meyer, uh, uh, Gleaves over from Australia and, and Hollard Insurance and the, the most recent one we did with Airbnb. You guys have really uh, fostered a lot of really good relationship with your, with your customers. Talk a little bit about what, what, what does that entail? What, what are you guys, what's your secret sauce to get people to want to go on shows and podcasts and webinars and, and talk about you? What, what's, what's the secret sauce? Because I'm curious because you know, my vendors ask me that all the time and I say no. Yeah, and I don't know if there's any one thing. Uh, it may be a cultural thing. Uh, we have multiple entry points that we keep alive, multiple communication channels. Um, you know, I have uh, communication with our customers. Our customer success team does on a regular basis. Our uh, product management team has uh, customer roundtables where we, uh, on a regular basis, solicit feedback and get ideas and thoughts from them. Um, you know, our sales team follows up throughout the, the whole process. We just have a lot of involvement that, again, it's not a, uh, okay, we're done and, uh, you know, like you drive your car off the lot and the salesperson doesn't want to talk with you again. We have a lot of hooks into different parts of the company that we keep alive uh, and I forgot to mention the support team. Uh, they're also part of that. And so we really try and foster uh, a relationship from multiple parts of the company. And when I say that that uh, that's what drives our product direction, uh, I'm not just making that up. Uh, you should ask uh, Juan about that next time you have him on. But that's really where uh, we take a lot of our direction from is right from what people are telling us that, that they need and a lot of the feedback that we get from listening to those calls. You know, being you've worked with a lot of SaaS companies, what's a trend that you're seeing? And, and what, what are some of the things that you're going to see change in terms of, you know, I like to call it buzzword marketing over the next six to 12 months in our industry in general? What trends are you seeing, you know, kind of industry wide? Uh, that's a rough one to call. I remember not too many years ago, uh, the CEO of a large uh, a Bay Area based company that I worked at talking about how uh, cloud based SaaS uh, wasn't something to be too, you know, too worried about, but uh, he needs to keep one eye on it, perhaps. And now look where we are today. 
That wasn't very long yeah. ago. That's a hard one to call. Uh, I can just tell you for us, um, remaining lightweight, easy to integrate, and uh, have a very uh, simple and quick onboarding experience for us is the deal. We're, we're out of the days of having, uh, you know, talking about uh, products in terms of this being a platform. That's just heavy, right? We don't want to displace things. We want to snap into the stuff that you're already doing and make it better. And so those are the kinds of things that are, are resonating with the people that we're coming, uh, that we're, you know, becoming partners with and the things that we're really focusing on as a company is just uh, integrating, becoming a, a fast part and adding value very quickly in existing ecosystems. Interesting. I, I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the ecosystem conversation and that's where I see a lot of, a lot of stuff going into it is, is the idea of building these, these different, you know, um, ecosystems of security partners, but it's, it's, again, I think it's a very difficult, we're, we're, we're in a very, uh, I want to say, uh, uh, interesting uh part of 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 everything we're going through right now in the industry as it's maturing we're coming off a of virtual rsa which is very weird um you know uh, so so let me ask you this are you are, are you looking to do in-person events this year oh yes yeah i i, I and we're we're part you know we were part of rsa this year uh part of the marketplace and i think it's important uh, to go wherever people can find you but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having more of those conversations. At this point, it feels uh, like people have really had kind of a, a webinar fatigue. We're starting to feel that. And people are anxious to, to get back out and to visit again in person. It's funny, the need to get information never changes, but the modes of obtaining it uh, do all the time and they change. That's why you've got to create your content, send it out through different modes, and then just test it all the time because it'll change. And you'll, I think you'll see a big change over the next year or two as things start to loosen up, people start to travel and get out, and uh, we'll be doing uh, a lot more in-person events, I hope. I think those are good. It's just it's difficult to cut through the chatter. That's yeah. the challenge yeah. that we have. But one thing that I really like that uh, you just sparked a thought on, and that's the uh, – we're talking about this ecosystem, and that's the concept of – working together to make everybody better. I know that came up in a, a session of yours that I saw just a, a while ago, and, and the person was talking about uh, the things they do that strengthens them also strengthens the people, their vendors that they work with, which makes everybody stronger together. And I thought that was a, a really nice concept, especially for a, uh, this was a mature, large vendor, right, that was willing to help smaller vendors get up to speed and and uh, establish some good practices. Yeah, I think the ecosystem is so important and it's, and it's really unbelievable. I'd like to pride myself on the fact that I have a good ecosystem around us, but I think we can do so much better. The industry is still very young. Yeah, yeah, it is. So Tom, what is, as, as a CMO, you know, kind of, uh, we're, we're almost uh, out of time here. So I kind of want to ask you a very, very fun question, I guess is, is as a CMO, when you get a really, you know, buzzword idea from someone on your team, what's, what do you tell them right then and there? What's, how do you shoot them down? No. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're focused on uh, being able to tell a story through plain English and make sure that the protagonist is not the company, but the person that we're talking with. And I would say talking with instead of talking to. Uh, we're in, in every, and I just uh, came on this call from a content review of some pieces, and we made some changes just to make that happen. Uh, stay in active voice, make sure that we're putting the customer as the protagonist and not chest beating. So many companies still do that, and they talk about we have this capability and we can do uh, these five things that will help you. And uh, we're trying to uh, simplify everything that we do to common language terms that you can look at and understand quickly, and then you can go deeper. But just to really simplify, that's kind of our mantra right now. Simplify the messaging, make sure the concepts are simple. You should be able to get something, read a headline, and understand what it's talking about in 
two or three seconds and then make the decision if you want to read further. If you don't, then, you know, the courtesy that we owe you, you know what's on this page or uh, this piece of content, and you can decide if you want to move on and look for something else or if this is for you. And so we try and do that with everything, with email, with our website, uh, with everything that we produce. I love that. Brilliant. Tom, thank you so much for taking some time and giving me a special tech corner. This was a different one than we've ever done on the show. Um, I wanted to, I want to try and change up concepts every, every week and bring you guys something different than just, you know, talking about technology or talking about a specific problem. But sometimes let's talk about how do we better our ecosystem. People like Tom are, in my opinion, are some of the thought leaders um, and really the doers. They're not only talking about it, they're actually doing it. You can see it in the Wistic messaging. You guys should go check it out. Tom, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, folks, that's it for this week's Tech Corner. Make sure to subscribe, follow. Monday, we'll be back with another practitioner brief, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You want to be there. Don't miss the latest, greatest stuff that's coming your way there. And until then, have a great weekend. Have a great rest of your day and night whenever you're listening to this. Thank you so much. And most importantly, folks, stay cyber safe. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and share it with your friends and colleagues and get all the latest information at cyberhubpodcast.com.